This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to deal with adding and subtracting in regards to fractions. Uh, in my last video we were talking about how to reduce fractions. Uh, for instance, let's say if we had two sixths, this is the same thing as two times one, and this is the same thing as two times three. So we saw that if you are dealing with a problem like this and, and there's a common factor like you could see that this is an even number this is an even number uh, I basically what I'm doing is I'm dividing the top by 2 and I'm dividing the bottom by 2 and that's why my answer is 1 -third. okay now I'm bringing this up again and I'm bringing this up this reducing because we actually have to go in the other direction when dealing with fraction sometimes. Like uh, for instance in, in a moment we're going to be dealing with the fraction 1 eighth. And uh, can it be reduced? Absolutely not. There's, there's nothing I could divide these guys by to make these numbers smaller. However, let's work in the opposite direction. Uh, sometimes instead of making the numbers smaller, which we call reducing a fraction, sometimes we want to scale the fraction up or make the numbers larger. So let's say I take 1 and I multiply it by 3 and I take 8 and I multiply it by 3 so notice I'm doing the same number top and bottom just like we divided the same number top and bottom when we reduce you have to multiply the top and bottom by the same value okay well you're, you're gonna see that I'm gonna get 3 fourths. so you know these two fractions are the same value don't get me wrong they're the same value except these numbers are just larger you know, I could divide that top number by 3 and I'll get 1. I could divide the bottom number by 3 and I'm also going to get 8. So they're the same, except this fraction is just has larger numbers. You know, and we could do it for other values. Maybe I want to take 1 eighth, and maybe I want to multiply the top and bottom by 2 to get 2 sixteenths, which is the same thing as 1 eighth. So sometimes it's to our advantage to scale fractions up, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, so I wanted to review that so that I could show you now the next part, which is actually an addition problem. So I'm going to erase this and get to, and show you a problem. All right, now uh, I've got some space. I could start with an actual problem. So let's say I have one eighth, and I want to add that to three fourths. You know, it turns out that carpenters, plumbers, electricians, you know, people who work in the trades, they have to deal with uh, halves, fourths. 8th, 16th, 30 seconds, sometimes even 64ths, and th these fractions come up a lot, uh, even if you do uh, home repair or some type of uh, remodeling around the house, these fractions come up when you measure things. So you got to know how to add fractions. So um, I want to add these two fractions. Now what some people do, which is advised, is uh, they put this vertically. So I'm going to show the same problem, except I want to show this vertically. Now, in order to add these two fractions, I can't just add them. I have to add them with common bottom numbers. Um, I guess uh, I should make a side note over here real quick. There's a side note. Maybe I should have gone over this first, is that uh, when you are adding, like, let's say, two-fifths plus one-fifth, when the bottom numbers are the same, you're adding fifths together. So um, I can add these two fractions just the way they are. Two-fifths and one-fifth, that's three-fifths. I got three-fifths there. And I could add fractions only when the bottom numbers are the same, and you land up just adding the numerators together. So one-fourth uh, plus one-fourth. Let's see, you keep the same denominator. One-fourth and one-fourth is two-fourths. Yep, two-fourths. Now, it turns out you could reduce this fraction, so there's one additional step. I could divide the top by two, and I could divide the bottom by two. So a fourth plus a fourth is really one-half. Okay, so there's some steps going on there. Okay, let, let's return back to this problem. So in order to add these two fractions together, I need a common denominator. All right, so to get the common denominator, I'm going to think, what is a common multiple between 8 and 4? 
So uh, this is my scratch work. I'm going to show my work over here. So I think, okay, let's see, 4, multiples of 4 are 4, 8, let's see, 4 plus 10, it's 12, plus 4 is 16. These are all multiples of 8, right? I'm sorry, multiples of 4. It's 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4. Let's show multiples of 8. 8 times 1, 8 times 2, 8 times 3, 8 times 4, and so on. What we want to do is figure out what is the common multiple. And I think you could see it right there. There's our common multiple. So that's the multiple we're going to use for our common denominator. Okay, I want to use that common multiple. So I'm going to use eighths here. Okay, so when they're the common multiple, I could add the fractions. All right, well, here you could see that uh, I'm not really changing the denominator, so it's like I'm multiplying the denominator by 1. And if I multiply the bottom by 1, you got to multiply the top by the same amount. So it looks like I'm getting a 1 there also. So it's staying the same. Now this fraction's not going to stay the same. So 4 times what is 8? 4 times 2 is 8. And if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 2, I have to multiply the top of the fraction by 2. That's called scaling the fraction up. The opposite of reducing, right? The opposite. We're scaling it up. So 3 times 2 is 6. All right. So it turns out I now have fractions with common denominators. This is great news because now I can add the two fractions together. So let's see, 1 eighth plus 6 eighths. Oh, well, you keep the same denominator, and you just add the numerators together. So 6 plus 1 is 7. So I get 7 eighths. And there you go. I, I can't reduce it, right? I can't divide the top and bottom by any number, so that's my final answer. So 1 eighth plus 3 fourths is really 7 eighths. Okay, so we just went over one example, and I'd like to do one more. I'm going to erase the space to work on it, so hang on one second. All right, now that I have some space to work with, let's take a look at our next example. Let's say we have three fifths, and I want to add two sevenths. Okay, I want to add those two together. Now, <clears throat> this one's going to be a little different because our denominators are strange. All right, well, I'm still going to arrange this vertically, just like I did for the last problem, so that it's easier to see the common denominator. It's just easier to do this. A lot of kids do this in school. Okay, so <clears throat> let's, let's do that. Let's get a common multiple. All right, so it turns out that with 5... In 7, I have to get a common multiple, so let's see, 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. This would be 30, right? And then I'm going to get, the next one would be 35. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to put this comma 35 right there. But it keeps going on forever. Okay, we'll do the same thing with 7. 7 times 1. 7 times 2, 3, oops, slip of the pen, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so we're looking for a common multiple. And you can see the first common multiple is the 35. You can see 35s and there's the common multiple. So that's the common multiple we're going to use, 30 fifths. You, you know, in the future, you could always multiply these denominators together. It may not always be the smallest, but it'll work. You'll get a common denominator. All right, and nevertheless, we see that uh, we've got our common denominator. So let's see, 5 times what is 35? I've got to multiply 5 times 7. I multiply the bottom by 7, what do I multiply the top by? Yep, if you said 7, you're right. You've got to multiply the top and bottom by the same value. Okay, here, what do we multiply by? Let's see, 7 times what? That's 5. 7 times 5 is 35. So I multiply the top by what? 5, yes. 
got to be the same number. All right, now that I found those, and I, I found these factors that I'm going to use to scale up the fractions, I'm going to multiply. So 7 times 3 is 21. 5 times 10, 5 times 2 is 10. Got ahead of myself there a little. So 5 times 2 is 10, and I now have a common denominator. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are now going to add fractions. Okay, we're going to add fractions. And I've got the common denominator, so you keep the common denominator. All right, so 21 35ths plus 10 35ths is 31 35ths. And there you have it. <clears throat> That's what this problem would look like. And, um, you know, uh, there are some other problems that talk about how to do them with whole numbers. Okay, so for instance, let's say we had a problem that looked like this, and instead it was 2 and 3 fifths plus, uh, I don't know, um, 9 and 2 sevenths. Let's say we we're going to add these fractions together. The problem would be done exactly the same way. You would still get the common denominators just like I did. I would still add these numerators just like I did. And you'd also add the whole numbers. You'd say 9 plus 2 is 11. So your answer is 11 and 31 35ths. Okay, works the same way over here. If this was uh, 3 and an eighth, this is uh, uh, 3 and 1 eighth inches, and we're going to add 2 and 3 fourths inches. Still add the fractions exactly the same way. 3 plus 2 is 5. So your answer would be 5 and 7 eighths inches. Okay, now one thing we didn't talk about is how to do subtraction. So I'm going to do a problem with subtraction. So hang on, I'm going to give myself some space. I'm going to clear this out. All right, before we um, start the subtraction problem, um, there is something that I do want to... Uh, elaborate on. Um, I have to keep in mind that if I ever have a fraction that looks like this, 7 sevenths, 7 divided by 7, that's the same thing as 1. Let's see if I have 2 halves, hmm, 2 divided by 2, that's the same as 1. Uh, 5 fifths, hmm, 5 divided by 5 is 1. So if the numerator and denominator are ever the same, then I also know that uh, that's equal to 1. Uh, why is this valuable? Uh, sometimes I'm going to be in the situation in a moment here that uh, I'll have 2 and a fourth and I'm going to have to do some borrowing. So I might want this number larger, this fraction larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow. Okay, think of it. I want you to think of this this is just explaining how borrowing works. Uh, I, could I could take one value away from the two. Okay, so I'm going to take one value away. In other words, I, I'm reducing this value by one. Now to make sure I balance this out, I'm going to add one. Okay, this way I, I, want this, I want this fraction to be equal to the original fraction, two and a fourth. So if I take away one here, I have to add on one here, and then this way it's the same amount. I'm not changing the value of the fraction. I'm just going to change the way it looks. So it turns out that one fourth and four fourths is five fourths. It looks strange, but these two fractions are the same value, except this is an improper fraction. I got a numerator that's larger than the denominator. Okay, let's practice that one more time. So let's say we've got 7 and 3 fourths. And for some reason, I have to do some borrowing. I'm going to take one value away from here, make that 6. But then I'm going to add 1 to this. So I'm going to add 4 fourths there. So that would be 6 and 7 fourths. That's the same as that. Uh, one last time. Uh, let's try um, eighths. Okay, subtract one from ten, add one to the three eighths. So that would be eight eighths. So that would be nine and eleven eighths. Nine and eleven eighths. And there you have it. You have your borrowing.
Okay, so I'm going to clear this out and show you how it, and why you need to know this. All right, we're going to take a look at one fraction problem. One, yep, only one. And I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, so you can see that I do not have a common denominator. So what I'd like to do is get a common denominator. So that's one and four fifths. So what I do over here is I show some work. I'd say, okay, here's sixths. Uh, let's see, six times one, six times two, three, four. Uh, what was that? Twenty-four. I'm losing count here. Um, five. Let's see, five is thirty-six, and so on. Okay, let's do the same thing with five. Five times one, two, three, four. 5, 6, and so on. Okay, and it turns out that I see the common multiple, and the common multiple is thirtieths. So I know now that if I'm going to combine these fractions, I'm going to get a common denominator, and the common denominator is thirtieths. All right, so if the common denominator is thirtieths, I play this game, I go, okay, 6 times what is equal to 30, make that look like a 6, uh, 6 times 5, so I multiply the top by 5, I multiply the bottom by 6, 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, so let's see, what does this give me? This is going to give me 5 thirtieths, this is going to give me 24 thirtieths, and uh, remember that this is a subtraction problem. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. All right, now, if you haven't already noticed, the problem is here. How am I going to take 24 away from 5? I, I know I get, I'm going to keep the same denominator, but how am I going to take 24 away from 5? I can't do that. I can't subtract those. I can't subtract more than what I have. This is where the borrowing comes in. So I'm going to take 1 away from here, So, and I'm actually going to show this. I'm going to take one away, right? I'm only taking one away, but I have to add one here. Remember, 30 thirtieths, right? 30 divided by 30 is one. So I'm subtracting one here, but I'm adding one here. So I'm keeping this all balanced as one value. So this is 35 thirtieths. Well, now we're in great shape because now I can subtract. I could take 24 thirtieths away from 35 thirtieths. When I subtract, I'm going to get 11 thirtieths. Okay, that takes care of the fractions. 2 minus 1, 1. So there you go, I've got my answer. So sometimes when we subtract, we get into this thing called borrowing, which could get a little tricky. Just got to be really careful. Subtract 1 from the whole number and add 1 to the fraction by taking that denominator and duplicating it by top and bottom. And that's how you could add to get that uh, improper fraction so you can subtract. Okay, so this has been a math guide video on how to add subtract fractions even when we have borrowing. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, uh, our other lessons, and we have over, we're, we're coming close to 100 videos now. All right, that as, that's as of, uh, as of January 2015. All right. So uh, take care. Have a good day.